SALT is being hosted by the Bridgemaker Arts Gallery here in Richmond, California. It's a wonderful nonprofit community art space, and they have opened themselves up to local curators as well as international curators. And they accepted my show, SALT, which is four artists using SALT as either medium or subject. And I'm gonna walk you through. One of the reasons I chose SALT as the subject for this series is that humans have a very intimate relationship with salt. It's necessary for life and we farm it. And while it is necessary in life in small portions, it is actually incredibly toxic in large portions. And so the show is meant to mimic that sort of spectrum from something that is very non-harmful and you can enjoy it for the beautiful crystalline it is all the way to Barbara and Kevin's work that show the more toxic and corrosive side of salt. As soon as you come to the building, you have Rochelle Richard's work. Here you have some beautiful salt sculptures of hers that I just enjoy for the textural solidness that they have, as well as just the obvious crystalline reference to salt because that's what they're made out of. Moving on from Michelle's work, we go here into Mary Page. Mary Page is a sort of micro to macro artist. While these look like they could be aerial photographs, they're actually micro photographs of these amazing petri dish-like creations that she made using salt crystals and paint and would create this landscape in her studio and then let the crystals grow and then would photograph them. So this one right here always looked like a crashing wave to me, but really it's just this tiny little bit of crystals from a Petri dish. And then you step out a bit and you get some beautiful shots from aerial photographs that Barbara Bosevain took from our local salt ponds. These are down in the South Bay and we mined salt there for a very long time, but they're currently under restoration because as you can see, these beautiful colors are actually quite toxic and it comes from a type of shrimp that lives in there and then the concentration of minerals that creates these crazy colors that you see. And so, you know, we have a very local aspect with her work here. And then zooming out even further, we have some more satellite photo inspired imagery from Kevin Kuhl. Right here is referencing not only the salt ponds in general, but the restoration process. And so it sort of covers a period of time if you started in the upper left and then continue down as the salt ponds sh shrink. And then he makes these tiles and the tiles are a compilation of steel, resin and some burning techniques that he does in some of his other works. He also has a rusting technique that he uses to bring out some of that rust color, which again resonates with qualities of salt being a very corrosive material. Welcome, we have one of the artists here. This is Rochelle and she's going to talk to us about her wonderful work with the crystal of salt. So Rochelle, what made you want to use salt as a medium for your art? Um, I started working with salt, uh, um, I think almost three years ago now, and I just wanted to try something that was kind of, I was working with graphite a lot of the time, and um, I wanted to work with something that was kind of formally similar, so uh, it was a white substance, and I was working with black, so I wanted that contrast, but also, um, I needed some. I wanted to try something new with my practice and try to explore a new material. And I wanted to use something I was familiar with. I, was, I wanted to use a material that I had a relationship with, and um, I wanted to use something that like I encountered frequently. Like you're always encountering graphite with, with pencils, and like I was, it was using graphite every day, just even when I wasn't drawing. And then I was at the market one day, and it was really like. I was really racking my brain what to use, and I also was kind of broke. And there was this like mountain of Morton salt on sale for like, I don't know, like 50 cents or something, a container. And I just looked up at this like mountain of salt, and I was like, what if I tried making some art with that? 
And I was like, I think it fits my aerobic requirements, and it's, it's really in, an interesting substance. So I, I led into this whole realm of research um, of just like how we interact, we've interacted with it in terms of like trade and economy and like political issues that have come up throughout history over salt, um, like cultural uh, ritual around salt, um, and it just was such a rich material to research and also to work with because of its instability that um, I kind of just fell in love with it and I haven't stopped working with it since. So here I'm actually using raw salt that I've harvested from the South Bay. Um, and it, I wanted to, so these crystals were formed naturally, like they weren't manipulated in any way by me. Um, and I'm just presenting it to, for the viewer to contemplate. Um, and you can even see like little, they're like little bugs or little debris in it still. And I wanted to maintain all of that. Um, but then I also, I wanted to use it like also as a, a window or an area for um, viewing salt. So changing the composition um, and kind of allowing it to be this, I don't know, this a different w entry into viewing it. But also just thinking about, um, a lot about the shoreline here mm -hmm. and um, the available shoreline, a lot of it because of the housing crisis and because of like, you know, tech here in San Francisco or in the Bay Area, um, there's more and more of a demand to build along the shoreline and there's a lot of conflict of um, building where some of the salt evaporation ponds used to be. So I've been, done, been doing like a lot of research and following these stories of um, these developers who want to build these condos and um, like private public parks in the area, um, in these areas where there had been um, salt evaporation ponds for many, many years. And so with these smaller sculptures, are these done in a subtractive method as opposed to the additive method? That yeah, I, I'm using, um, what I really enjoyed about making these sculptures is that I'm using water to make the, uh, to carve into it more than my hand. A lot of them start with an initial um, car like carving tools, uh, but I can't, because the substance is, is very, it's not like marble or it's, it's not a traditional material that you can carve with and it, it, um, it's very difficult to work with in terms of trying to carve it. So a lot of it, um, so I'll create these initial marks and then I'll use the water um, to make, and uh, like dissolve certain areas and kind of use the water as a tool um, and it's this really, literally fluid tool where it's also like this, it's this constant, it's a, such a, has, it requires a lot of focus because you're using a material, or you're, I'm using water, which is so difficult to, um, to figure out. You have to just really pay attention to how you are, where the water is going, the movement of the water around the substance, the rate in which it, um, does the, it dissolves the salt and the salinity of the water. Um, if the water reaches a certain level of salinity, it will stop dissolving the salt. And so just like, it's such a um, meditative experience of making these pieces because of that. Interesting. Well, that's a lot of fun. Thank you for talking with yeah. us today yeah, about thanks, your Vanessa. work and giving us an insight. Um, and come check it out. Cool, yeah. <laughs> thanks. <laughs>